big repricing uh, in US rates as well. The dollar index at 103.82 right now. Reaction analysis with Keith Fitzgerald, his principal at the Fitzgerald Group, is live in Miami for us today. And Keith, I really get the sense that this is, you know, for want of a better expression, kind of a real fog of war moment as we try and understand exactly what's happening in the US and the impact that is being felt around the world. Just walk me through what we can expect to see ahead of the European market open. What are the consequences for, for of all of this in your view and where does the, the blame lie right now? Okay, well, let's take a couple things. There's a lot to unpack here. Number one, I think the relief rally we're seeing is good because that means there's still confidence in the financial system. That said, I think there's going to be considerable volatility over the next three to five days. We still don't know where all the counterparty risk lies. Global markets are very, very intertwined. With regard to who's to blame here, I think that the greed and avarice that has long been present in Silicon Valley has come home to roost. We had the Federal Board of Reserves change from fractional reserves to no reserves, and that let banks like SVB go out and start buying assets instead of simply loaning money. My contention is banking should be boring, a lot like watching paint dry, and anytime it's not, you got a problem, which is unfortunately what happened. So Keith, walk us through what all of this is going to mean for the Fed as well. Goldman now saying there is going to be no March rate hike. What's your view? I think that that's a very optimistic and potentially dangerous viewpoint. I think the Fed is going to continue on its present course. And the fact that we're seeing a 50 basis point probability relax tonight as we talk is getting ahead of itself. I don't see that at all. I think that's gamesmanship of the highest order. Computers are at work right now simply doing a mean reversion trade. None of the problems that we had before SVB have gone away. In fact, they're arguably still going to get worse if the data comes out. Keith, it's Hadley out in Abu Dhabi. I mean, we're already hearing suggestions that, um, pretty strong suggestions, that the UAE, for example, is going to step in um, and potentially uh, shore up SVB's UK arm. In your mind, what is the fallout going to look like here? I mean, the, the risk of contagion. You know, I think it's been substantially reduced with the FDIC, the Fed, and the U.S. Treasury Department stepping into the fray. So, you know, again, this collective sigh of relief, I think the global contagion is off the table. But again, we simply don't know where the counterparty risk lies right now. So in contrast to 2008, the parallel really is 1929. They have got to stop this and they've got to stop it now. We won't know until the U.S. session opens tomorrow. And my, my sort of overwhelming question at this point, even President Biden has weighed in on this one and saying that they're going to get to the bottom of who caused this mess. But isn't it the federal government um, and the state government, the regulators themselves that are complicit? I would submit not only they complicit, they had a hand in designing this mess. And, you know, so the financial alchemy that represents modern financial systems is the problem. And, you know, that's the part that's going to have to have a serious conversation because, you know, banks like SVB did what they needed to do, arguably within a structure of rules that are the problem. So to me, it's the system that's broken or at least needs to be seriously reviewed here. Yeah, and you know, the other thing is uh, SBB's risk management policy is also really being called into question. You had uh, this range of obscure funding mechanisms, and then at the same time, we also see regulators being all but asleep at the wheel. If the bank was so systemically important, then you would think that someone might have caught on to what was happening over there, right? That would be my supposition. I mean, I, you know, I am personally flabbergasted that the system is what it is today and that this stuff was allowed to happen. Because, you know, if the regulators sit here and they want to lecture us about regulate this, regulate that, we got to have reserves, we got to have that, then you know what? Enforce that stuff. Don't let it slide. Where were the regulators? Where were the auditors? I think there's going to be very serious questions asked about how the rating systems work. Why were these banks allowed to take on assets when they should have been backing their deposits? You know, that is a fundamental issue that has got to come to the forefront now. We can't ignore it and kick the can down the road. I think it's an embarrassment to the U.S. Federal Reserve. I think it's an embarrassment to the banking regulators, frankly. Hmm. You know, Keith, uh, one of the other things I wanted to draw your attention to is this tweet from Bill Ackman, who said that the government had done the right thing here by providing a, a backstop. But at the same time, more banks will likely fail despite that intervention. Is that 
true in your mind? Will we see additional bank failures uh, similar to what is unfolding right now, or is this uh, more of an isolated event? You know, it's too early to tell, but that is exactly my concern when I say that, you know, we don't know where the counterparty risk is. I agree with uh, Bill on that one. I think that we simply don't know what other banks are exposed. We don't know what mechanism, how far this is going to go. The situation is really a lot like throwing a stone into a pond. Most people watch the stone, but what this incident has proven is you've got to watch out for the ripples. Indeed. All right, Keith, we'll leave it there. Really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much for your analysis. That's Keith Fitzgerald, principal at Fitzgerald Group. Hi, it's Keith here. Thanks for checking out today's highlight clip. What'd you think? Did I make sense? Is there something you'd like to add? Make sure you leave a comment down below and of course, click subscribe to keep up right here on YouTube or sign up for the email newsletter at the link below. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram for my real-time thoughts on markets, analysis, and a whole lot more.